thought to myself, this is the, like the best day of my life, something I'll never forget. It was a big jump for the NBA to the best league, and uh, I didn't know if I could make it or not. It was unbelievable, the passion in the moment, and uh, couldn't help but get caught up in it. Just that underdog. I'm just under the surface, just doing my thing. Game six, opening round of the 2006 NBA playoffs. Facing elimination, the Washington Wizards were nursing a one-point lead with 15 seconds remaining in overtime. So Arenas will go to the line. Oh, yeah, two free throws. A lot of pressure on Arenas now. You know, LeBron makes his way over there. That's interesting. Who knows what LeBron James just said? He says, you know, if you miss these shots, you know who's going to hit the game winner. And I'm thinking, it ain't going to be you because I all miss free throws. And I'm like, wait, that, that wasn't me. I didn't shoot that. Ramos misses both, and Elgowskis calls timeout. Well, you know, I missed the free throws. We got to get one more stop. 14.1 remaining. Uh, Wizards clinging to a one-point lead. Right back in the hands of LeBron James. Hughes, Damon Jones, puts it in! And the Cleveland Cavaliers have hung on to beat the Wizards, and the Wizards season has come to an end. Oh, what a heartbreaking mm. loss for Washington. I missed them. You know, uh, I don't know. You live and you learn. You know, something, you know, I can take going into the summer to use it as motivation. Gilbert Arenas has blossomed into a star in Washington. He has always found the motivation to overcome obstacles, beginning with his less than glamorous upbringing in Los Angeles. I just knew we was moving away from, you know, Tampa, Florida and coming to California. And uh, I just had to follow my dad's lead. I felt like trying to be an actor, trying to raise money for both me and him and possibly for my family. I thought coming out to the West Coast would be nice. California, Los Angeles, as you see, Hollywood. <laughs> but when Gil Sr. struggled to find work, he found himself unable to provide for his young son's basic needs. From what I can remember, we was living in the car at a park. I was sleeping in the very back, in the trunk. Gil Sr. had just about reached his breaking point, but his little boy gave him the strength to continue didn't have a job, didn't have much money, and I was carrying my son through this. And I, at the time, he was five years old, and I didn't want to show him that men really cry or get really emotion. So I was trying to hold back some tears, and he looked over and said, Dad, what's wrong? And I looked at him, I said nothing. And he looked at me, and he said, Dad, it's going to be all right. And I, I had this, this smirk and a smile on my face, and he's telling me this. I'm thinking in my mind, he don't even know what, what I'm going through, but he's telling me it's going to be all right. But to hear that from him, it, it made me enjoy that moment. Because if he was telling me that it was going to be all right, then I know I had a good friend and a good son. Gil Sr. did get a job taking a night shift with UPS. So when his dad went off to work, Gilbert Jr. went to work too. He go to work probably about one, two o'clock. As soon as he leave, I'm right out the door with him. Get my ball down the street and a sandwich in my hand, dribbling up to the park, you know, you know, shooting basses in the dark. Father and son formed a tight bond, but Gilbert also received love and guidance from a different source. Well, I was 11 when I met Maggie Foster. I was trying out for an ARC team, and uh, she, you know, she was the team mom, her son played on the team. And Maggie just took him like it was her kid, and she would invite me and Gil over to her house to, to eat dinner. And then he started hanging out at our house, and um, he was wild. <laughs> he was just, he was wild. Yeah. And I mean, we just had a fun, fun time. 
Maggie Foster was a lot more than just a team mom. She was willing to give extra attention to all of her players, and she helped fill a void in Gilbert's life. She was like a mother figure to, you know, me and a couple other other players that played on the team. Shake the hand! Shake the hand! She was just a mother away from a mother, and that's how I always looked at her. As a teenager, Gilbert's skills on the court began to improve. But when he entered high school, he got a disappointing outlook from his coach. You would never be a varsity player on this team. You know, it hurt. It did hurt. But I had that fighting power that, you yeah, know, right. And I'm going to be a varsity player on this team. You know, but my dad was like, we're trading schools. Arenas was motivated by the snub, and his new coach, Howard Levine, had a more optimistic assessment of Gilbert's talent. Coach told me, you know, I'll be the first NBA player he's ever coached. And you're like, yeah, 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 okay. But, uh, you know, he worked with me, worked with me. You know, I led, you know, this area in scoring, you know, two years straight. Despite Gilbert's success at the high school level, college coaches weren't exactly knocking down his door and his future was in doubt. You know, at the time, you know, 5'9", 106. I'm not even in the top 100 in my class. You know, my dad was like, what are you going to do after, you know, high school? And I really didn't know. Gilbert Arenas was lightly recruited out of high school, but there was one big name suitor. Arizona came calling. They came in kind of late. I was so excited, you know, we're talking devotion. Arizona. Gilbert made it to Tucson, but Olsen remembers what critics said about his new recruit. You go there, they've got a freshman starting in that two spot. Uh, you're going to get zero minutes. In true Gilbert Arenas fashion, he used those words as motivation, and he continues to wear the slight with pride. So if you're wondering about why he wears the, the number zero, that was because he wanted, he wanted to have that on his chest to remind him every day this is what people were saying. The Zero rose to become a starter as a freshman and a hero as a sophomore, helping to lead Arizona to the NCAA title game in 2001. You know, after my first year, I'm like, you know, maybe I could make the NBA. I was like, well, you know, I'm going to test it out and see what it's like. And left. Just as Arena seemed to be within reach of his dream, doubts continued to follow him. One by one, players were chosen in the first round as teams underestimated the underdog, leaving Gilbert a trail of broken promises. Sacramento told me, there's no way I will get past them at 25. The Sacramento Kings select Gerald Wallace from the University of Alabama. But somehow I went to 31. He was so upset when he, when he dropped to the second round, you know, and... He told me sometimes things happen for a reason. 